I'm Kate with RDG EDU, and today I'm going to show you how to load and run our Rust action. So if you're not familiar with actions, we're going to open up our actions panel first, and there are two ways to do this. We can click on our actions tab here, or we can go to window and scroll down to actions, and it will open our actions panel there as well. Now you can see it's empty and we're gonna load in our action. And so to do that, we're gonna click this little box up here and go down to load actions. Now I have all of my actions saved in a folder. If you have never used actions before and have just downloaded it, check your downloads folder. They'll be located in there. You can move them to your own folder. Just make sure that you've got them saved in a location where they're accessible. I'm gonna go down here and go down to our Rust action, select it and click open. And you'll now see that our action is loaded into the panel. This is the set currently, if we expand this and click our Rust action, and then to run it, we'll just hit this play button down here. And there we have our Rust action. Let's get into what this particular Rust action is doing to our image. So if we toggle this on and off, you'll notice that we've got this kind of red tone initially. And when we turn our layer on, all of those red tones are gonna go more towards this greenish brown color. So that adds this vintage looking vibe to this particular image. You'll also notice that our shadows are a little bit brighter and our highlights are a little bit darker, so it's gonna compress the dynamic range a little bit more and give it more of this painterly effect. On this particular image here, if we run our action, you'll notice that the more magenta and red tones in his skin are turning into this more desaturated brown color. We're adding a lot more detail into the shadows as well, so we can kind of see by the side of his neck and in the shadow in the background how we're sort of increasing the amount of detail in there. We're adding a little bit of greens and browns into the shadows as well. So let's talk a little bit about what's actually happening here. And we can go into our layers here and break down and see what exactly is happening. Each of these layers is named individually. So even if you're not entirely sure what that layer is actually accomplishing, or you don't necessarily know how to manipulate a curves layer, you'll be able to identify with the description here what's actually happening. And you can come in and you can toggle these layers on and off. If, for instance, you decide that this image is too saturated, you wanna desaturate it a little bit more, you can come in and you can find the increased saturation and you can turn it on and off. So instead of creating your own layers and adding on top of this existing action, you can kind of work through and be able to tell, okay, well maybe this effect is something that I wanna do. Is there already a layer that's accomplishing that? And then you can manipulate that particular layer. You can turn it off. You can change the opacity of it. And it's pretty customizable in that respect. I also like this particular action on something maybe that's set outside, like something like this for instance. We've got already these kind of cool tones. Her skin tone has a little bit of magenta into it. And so if I run this here, we're gonna see there's sort of browns and green tones coming into the skin. We're sort of deepening that skin tone and making it really rich. We've also added a little bit more green into the background here, into the highlights, and we've decreased the luminosity of that as well. So we've got this really rich cyan in the background here, which contrasts really nicely with the browns in her skin tone. I just wanna give you one more demonstration of how versatile this action is. Let's pull up this particular image that already has a lot of brown tones in it as well. And we'll run this action. It has a little bit of a different effect depending on the original tones of the image. There are a couple of images or types of images that this particular action isn't so great for. So for instance, if you have an image that already has a lot of native greens in it, it's going to sort of take those greens and push them more towards this like cyan, very saturated color, which I don't think works particularly well. So I might avoid images that already have a lot of green in them, but if you have images that already have a lot of warmth, it works really well for. It works great for a wide range of imagery and it helps to give that really classic, timeless aesthetic. <laughs> 